Everybody start doing zoom in, zoom out. Two, start zooming in slowly. Camera one, get close up on his face and get ready to zoom out. Three, get tight on that guitar and get ready to zoom out. Keep going, two. Going to three. Slow zoom out. Three, starting now. Three is live. Slow zoom out. A little faster. Break one. Going to one. Slow zoom out one. Get way back two. Get way back. Thirty two. Keep going one. Keep zooming out. All right. Looking good. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll send them over there. Okay. Bye bye. Going to two. Back out three. Back way out three. Liquid mics. Going to three. Keep going. Two. Keep going. Two. Start slow zooming on the hole of the guitar. Three. Starting right now. Slow zoom in on the hole. Three. A little bit faster. Go right into the hole and keep going. Focus. Slow zoom out. One. one. Zoom out. One. Thank you very much. Can I have a more time? Going to two. Northwest. And Andrea. Thank you very much. Okay. Going to three and two. Hold that shot three, you ready to zoom out? Fast pass that one. Going to three now, slow zoom out three. Zoom back, slowly. Going to DVE now. Back. Yeah. Going to three, zoom out three. Ready two, those letters. Take two now. Okay, hold that shot three. No, it's one L. We already checked. That's what he told us. Yeah. Two and three. Two and three alive. Two and three alive. The next roll is ready. One get tied on his face. Keep going three, looking good. Keep going three. Okay, three, now slowly. Go out of focus. Alright, one. Two and one are live. It's only me. That's not the head. That's not the head. That's not. That's the, that's the feedback from the silver motor on camera one. One in three alive. Blue's letters. Blue's letters. This is the motive. 
Thanks a lot, Mr. Tim Price and all for dropping this video about it. Okay, so the camera operators. Okay. I want some, a couple lights on the host set. Okay. And I want one camera on the host set. One camera on the yeah. camera one on the host set. Yeah. Okay. Camera two. So we're gonna I want you to look at camera one, the operator. Camera three. Thank you. I gotta get rid of this. So. One, give me a full shot. One, give me a full shot. Or I'm sorry, two, give me a full shot of that post. No, wait, I'm confused. Camera one, give me a full shot of the host set. Camera one, full shot of the host set. I hope somebody's at their dance. Okay, that's good. Okay, I like it. That's good. Get your shot ready. Get your shot ready. Yeah, it's there. Okay, lose your. Uh huh. Are you ready, Jimmy? Robin, be quiet. Hi, folks. Well, Jimmy, aren't you going to ask me how I'm doing in my latest uh, correspondence course and how to be an anchor man? Dean, how are you doing in that latest course to be a correspondence person for the news anchor man? Well, I tell you, I learned how to shuffle my papers this week. We spent all week right. learning how to shuffle the papers and look like look like we're actually doing something. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Actually, I learned how to do news from uh, from Panama. Is the price of the cocaine gone up? You know what I mean? <laughs> and now, news from Russia. The glasnost problem is pretty big, you know? People are free to say anything they want. Ah! And now, news from... News from Lebanon! And now, I think you're definitely improving, Dean. Well, what about that final exam? I hear your final exam's coming up pretty soon. Well, uh, my final exam is coming up. Before I, I go and uh, take my final exam, I want to tell you about the latest craze that's sweeping the nation, Jimmy. And it's called uh, the Arnold Dance. Now, we've all seen Rambo movies and Arnold Schwarzenegger movies and uh, uh, all these movies where the guys have an endless stream of bullets that they fire at the enemy and the guys are all dying, you know, the stunt people. And this is how it works. It goes like this. You, you dance the Arnold dance like this. And you can get involved right at home. So get ready. We're all going to do the Arnold dance. Ready, folks? Here we go. There we go, Jimmy, and now I'm ready for my final exam. Well, what about that final exam? I know you've really been studying hard. You've been working on it a long time. How about the final exam? Are you going to pass that? What are you going to do? Well, the, the uh, question on the final exam is, what do you do when you have three minutes of dead air time? Well, Dean, what do you do when you have three minutes of dead air time? You do a Dan Rather, Jimmy. Watch. You know, you can always count on this. Let's get another film. Dry here. things up around this place. Real briefly before we come back to our show, yes. we'd like to run the runaway hotline number 1 800 3352. If you want to call home, talk to somebody, that's 1 800 392 3352. Now we're coming back to the door studio. Just one moment. Thank you. I've been looking for a roll video. Right, TV one. Right back with live music in our studio. Right now, this is your little pre recorded music. Thank you, Right here, well, Citizens Live. This is Julie Howard. Bye, thank you, Mark. Hey, uh, Becky. I forgot about the Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's okay. I'm trying to grab my chair. Uh, all those guys need to come up forward to the edge of the carpet or they're going to be in the dark. Would you please? Hey, Becky. 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 Number one, get the guitar player. Now, hey, Renee, oh, that's a great beautiful song by this Julie Howard. Now we are coming back live in the studio, and I just want to say before we go all the underground live, Citizens Live, we'd like to welcome the Pocket Fisherman. Citizens Live, the Pocket Fisherman.
is, folks, Mr. Hi, Dean folks. Langston. Hi, folks. You've heard of the temperature index. You've heard of the humidity index. You've heard of the stock market index. Well, today, you're going to hear about the stupidity index. What happens is that uh, a lot of people uh, like to blame things on other events, but really it boils down to them being kind of stupid. For example, there is an increased number of spinal injuries being reported around the country. Apparently the drought has lowered the water level. In a lot of these places people like to go swimming and they dive into the water without looking first and of course they crack their skull and their back. Well that's not really uh, because of the drought, it's because they were stupid. And uh, I have another example. For example, Clements uh, stating that the blacks are not going to be going to vote because they're going to be busy out frying fish. That's kind of stupid. What I'm getting at is we have something called a stupidity index and it's calculated by this formula right here. And what I mean to tell you is that we have the number of weekly incidents multiplied by the average temperature at noontime divided by the number of times the weatherman is wrong and that's plus the constant because the weatherman is always wrong at least once a week. And then it's times 88 because it's 1988. So with our stupidity index formula we have eight weekly incidents and I'll tell you the rest of them in a second times 95 the average noontime temperature divided by twice the weatherman was wrong this week remember there's a constant of one plus the one time he was wrong times 88 because it's 1988 and that gives us a stupidity index of 334.40 now listen more examples Khomeini saying that going along with a cease fire is like taking poison can you imagine something stupid like that <laughs> what a jerk now brainless idiots who are are told not to cross low water crossings but do so anyway stupid another example is the uh, elect i mean the, yeah the electric utility department spending all that money to tell us to conserve why are they spending all that money to tell us to conserve money i don't get it this sounds kind of stupid and now for my favorite one this has to do with uh, that former sleazeball in the united states attorney general ed meese he once said that uh, anyone who fell under suspicion must be guilty so, Ed Meese must be guilty of being a sleazeball, don't you think so? Anyway, our stupidity index for this week is 334.40. Welcome to next week. Folks, sayonara. When did Citizens Live start out? What, in my mind or in, in principle or in practice? Uh, actually start in studio. Mm, we started in, in August of 85. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we had a few false starts, uh, problems with the cable company. Um, they finally got their stuff straight. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we really started rolling every Saturday starting September of 85. Mm -hmm. And we have been there almost every single Saturday since then, with the exception of, I think, in the last three years we've missed three Saturdays. Hmm. Why uh, did you decide to start something like Citizens Live? Mm, a lot of fun. It covers a lot of ground very quickly. Being, being a variety show, you get to have bands and uh, comedians and magicians and public affairs, uh, interviews. Um, you name it, Michael, and we've had it on that show. Um, it's, just, it's just a nice format that allows to have all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Has uh, some of the acts that you've had on, either magicians, bands, or comedy, have they ever uh, made it big uh, from the show? From the show itself? Mm -hmm. uh, I doubt anyone's made it big from the show itself. Uh, artists usually make it big after they've appeared in many different places and accumulated quite a few um, points in terms of viewership. And before we went live, we used to do a taped show every mm -hmm. Saturday there in the studio, and we were the first people to put Timbuk3 on on television here in town. Mm -hmm. um, I think they had been on television once before in Madison, that's what they told me. Mm -hmm. uh, but this was about a year before they were discovered nationally. They, we were the first people to put on Timbuk3. So you feel that the show itself, when it was taped, helped them in their career? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it helps a lot of people. You'd be surprised how much um, these artists uh, relish the opportunity to do something in front of the cameras because then they get to see themselves. And live television is, is so much of a strain, it's, it's hard to do. And these bands like doing the live show because they get experience in a live format, which is very demanding. Mm -hmm. What are, or who have been the, um, in your, outstanding in your mind, standing out in your mind actually, um, 
who are the biggest names you ever had on the show itself? Gosh, that's a hard question to answer. You mean uh, in terms of national recognition or uh, local recognition? Local, state, or even uh, national Well, I guess national would be the Ramones. We had them on once, and that seemed to attract a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a big national act from yesteryear, I think, the late 70s, part of the early 80s. Mm -hmm. um, statewide, we've had just about a lot of the single crooner types with a guitar, Alan Demeron, Gosh, there are so many people, I can't even remember all their names. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the top Willie Nelson type star from Australia on once. Uh, had a lot of people on, Michael. I can't even remember all the names. So, but still, you've had quite a uh, large gathering of uh, local artists and... Yeah, with um, an average of uh, six to nine acts per show times 50 shows per year, I mean, it starts to add up how many people we've had on, on the show. When the show first started, uh, how long did it run? Uh, an hour. An hour? It ran an hour for the first um, five or six months, mm -hmm. and then we jumped to 90 minutes. And we've been there ever since, 90-minute show. That's been for the past two years now? Two and a half. Two and a half years? Yeah. Yeah, we'll be coming up on our third year anniversary at the end of August of 88. So you're looking at possibly doing a, a large third anniversary show for everybody? Yeah, we're doing the uh, 3rd of September of 88. We have a big party show. It won't be a standard Citizens Live thing where there's one act followed by another by another. It's just going to be a band playing. And the band, incidentally, consists of uh, crew members on the, on the Citizens Live crew mm -hmm. who have formed their own band called Power Monkey. And uh, they will be performing. And um, we will be uh, taping the show. People are invited to come down and dance and uh, stuff like that. So there is an area for uh, people to come down and be part of an audience? Mm -hmm. Well, there always has been. Mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, there's, uh, in the very beginning, we had to go out of our way to attract an audience, to mm -hmm. get them down there into the studio. And then it caught on for a while until we, we ran into the opposite problem, which was too many people coming to the studio. And then I got into trouble with the fire marshal mm -hmm. because we had over 75 guests per show and that was going too far. So then I had to kind of curtail that and uh, rein it in somewhat. And now we're back down to very small audiences and occasionally a band will bring in all their friends and family members. And, mm -hmm. and I don't care too much anymore yeah. um, because uh, the bigger audience really is out in, in television land. Right. When you were mentioning uh, crew, uh, what is the normal uh, number of staff that you have for your crew to produce the live show? Well, it's an all-volunteer staff. It always has been. Um, great testimony to the spirit of volunteerism we have here in America. The average crew would be four camera operators, one audio operator, one or two video operators, uh, a director, floor manager, additional side techies. You're talking eight to 12 people, roughly. We have had as many as 19 people and then working on a show and then, then you start adding extras to be on skits. So we've had up to, I think, up to 30 people working on one show. You were an extra several times. Uh, several times you brought in that uh, group that reenacts the World War II battles and we had brief uh, scenes with your group and, and the hosts and, and stuff like that, band members. And those are big uh, productions with a lot of uh, extras and techies. So an average of 10 uh, technicians? Approximately. Uh, crew members per show? Yes, is a basic average. Yeah. How long does it take to uh, set up for the show every Saturday to get ready for it? Approximately three hours. Um, I've had some experience in broadcast television and uh, we do in three hours what uh, most of the big time shows do in two days. Mm -hmm. So we cram a lot of activity into a fast and furious three hours before we go live. Now I'm sure that uh, the regular broadcast companies have suffered problems with this back in the 50s and early 60s, uh, but I'm sure you've developed uh, or have ran across problems that have that the show is being live, uh, technical problems of sorts. 
Well, the, the advantage or disadvantage of a live TV show is that your problems are right there for everyone to see as they're happening. Um, yeah, we discovered a lot of the problems that the so-called live shows of the 50s went through. Oddly enough, I noticed that a lot of the people who specialized or got good at live dramas or live comedies in the 50s and early 60s went on to be what we call now the superstars in films and television. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that coming out of this process that we have here, which is a highly intense production effort, um, we've had hundreds of volunteers come through, a lot of them spinning off their own shows, uh, in some cases actually competing with us. Mm -hmm. So it, it, uh, it's a, a unique way to train a lot of people very well. The way I like to put it is that once you've gotten good at live television, everything else you ever do from that point on looks like or feels like it takes place in slow motion mm -hmm. because the, the production pace is so slow compared to what we do. Mm -hmm. But like I said, uh, it being a live show, have you, have you really experienced any big technical problems like a piece of scenery falling down in the middle of, a, in the middle of an act? That, we haven't had too many problems like that. We've had a couple of amusing incidents. I think uh, we used to have a, a fake brick wall. It was like paper thin in the background. We used to write graffiti on it every Saturday mm -hmm. for the show. And it once fell, kind of like fell on the back of the host who was delivering a comic routine. That was fairly funny. I mean, she just like slept it off her back, so it was no big deal. Sort of like bringing the house down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else have we had uh, well, along those lines. Um, oh, we've had uh, a drunken band member trip over a wire that was connected to an amp. So the next act that came on was singing, and he couldn't hear his voice. Uh, a few things like that. Uh, have you ever experienced, or have you had uh, any problems with, uh, or have you had any uh, cooperation with uh, the ACTV people? With the, uh, with the show itself? Austin Community Television, mm -hmm. this, this institution here. Mm -hmm. um, well, in the beginning, people thought we were mad to try to, this sort of event. Um, now everyone likes it and respects it, and, and some people actually imitate us. So I imagine it's a bit like colonizing a new frontier. You, the first people out there take all the flack, but and they, again, they reap a lot of benefit, too. Mm -hmm. And then everyone else follows.